What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Park to Prem here with Town or Town. Today is episode number 59 and it is the start of season number 8. Yes, a big landmark. Last episode, if you missed it, it was a longer episode. It was a bit of a special one, an end of season review, a new format that I'm thinking we might go with going forward with the end of season reviews. I got some really useful feedback from it. If you've got any further thoughts, go back to that video, leave it down in the comments there. Um, but yes, thank you to everyone who watched that. And if you're sat going into this new season thinking I've fallen off the bandwagon, I can't remember what's been happening here at Tau Law. Of course, do go check it out. But yes, today we start our first season ever in League One. Of course, just as a reminder, League One on this database has one fewer team because of Berry pulling out. It creates some problems in the Football Manager database when teams go poof. Um, but of course, Berry coming back soon. Maybe, maybe Park to Prem FM21, anyone with Berry? No, maybe. There's, there's folks on this challenge for now, shall we, everyone? I know people have been thinking about it already. Of course, we're in a new league, but also... We have some new leagues in the game now. Yes, I've added in France, Germany, Italy and Spain. Just the top tiers. Uh, this will increase the number of players loaded in the game world. So we should get a little bit more variety with players. And it will also mean in the coming years when we do start to hopefully compete in Europe, uh, the challenge will be that much harder because the teams in France, Germany, Italy and Spain will have fully fleshed out squads and leagues and Basically, in having the leagues loaded, the teams in these countries should be a little bit better. And we have benefited from that in a few different ways, having the new leagues added. The first of those things is our scouting range has been upgraded. As you can see here, we can now scout anywhere within Europe, which is a really, really nice bonus. And it has also op opened up a new opportunity to both buy and sell players. Yes, um, of course, more teams loaded means more teams looking for players. And that is perhaps highlighted most by the big transfer out of the window. Matthew Dimitriou, yes, the Canadian international, a player without a work permit who has huge potential and I would love to play, but there's just no way he was ever going to get a work permit for us. We have sold him to Lille for just shy of half a million pounds including uh, a 50% of any future sale. Not profit, just any future fee they get for him will get half of it. You can see he's gone down to their reserve team now. A great player at 18 years old, absolutely loads of potential, lots and lots to like about him. But without him having a work permit, and when they came in with half a million of pounds... I kind of just had to accept it. You don't really have a choice in that situation. You can see there have been a few further sales. Timmy has left us to go to Cano Pillars. He was a disappointment, wasn't he, Timmy, last year? Barely bumped into the first team. But we've at least gained a little bit of money for him and covered his wages that we paid for the entirety of last year. Callum Jones was seeking a new challenge. He has gone to TNS, a player who joined us a number of years ago now. You can see in the last couple of years... He has fallen off things just a little bit. Last year in League 2, 6.5 free racing just wasn't good enough. TNS wanted him. He wanted to play football. I'm not going to stop him there. Forster Kasky has left us. Yes, he's left the building. He's gone to York City, who were promoted to League 2 last year. Um, he's joined them for £10,000, which is a measly transfer sum. But we have at least got his wages off the books. And he was on, I think, £3,500, which was a ludicrous sum of money for a player who last year played... 24 games and really didn't shine in them. And of course, with Andre Dazelle coming into the team, just there wasn't really a spot for him. Anyway, one at last sale for money. Jan Bernhardt, uh, a player who was actually produced at our academy. He has gone to play for some random non-league German team for £140. Probably the most random transfer you'll ever see. I don't know if this was impacted by the fact I loaded in Germany. But yes, random non-league German sides buying town or players for £140. You'll love to see it. A few players going out on loan as well here, including the likes of Deshaun Bernard and Ryan Barr. Uh, a few of these players I did want to sell for sums of money. I really wanted to get actual cash for them, but teams just weren't interested. So I think in pretty much every case here, we've got the player off the wages, which I guess has to be the main thing. Players like Gary Burke, who of course was a prospect once upon a time, I guess it would be fair to say. He was on loan at FC United last year, has now moved to Wickham to play on loan with them. And a few other players here, like Deshaun Bernard, he has gone to Bristol Rovers. They're paying all of his wages. He's 25 years old. He's just never going to play in our team. Another player who's joined Bristol Rovers, Ryan Barr as well. Um, if you were wondering, Bristol Rovers, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say they're in our league, which is kind of interesting. The fact that players in our under-23s are going to teams in and around our division um, and are probably going to play for them in the first team. That makes me feel like the media is severely undervaluing us or maybe 
Bristol Rovers are just really overvaluing our players because Ryan Barr and Deshaun Bernard not good enough for our first team, not even good enough to be backups. Um, I guess the good news is wages are paid, playing on a big stage. Hopefully they can go on to be sold for money. Uh, Traven Walters, you might remember we picked him up on a free transfer from Bolton last year. Never played for us. He's now gone on loan to Exeter. Again, another team in our division taking a player on loan. I have a sneaking suspicion he just won't play for them, but I'm hoping to be wrong. And at the very least, in all of those loans, the players' wages have been covered. McMenamin, I have elected to loan to Swindon Town. He was a really good backup goalkeeper for us last year. Brought in on a free transfer from Linfield. He now goes on loan to Swindon Town in the National League. Regular first-team football for him. Good stuff there. And if you're wondering, a number of the players who we loaned out last year, uh, including the likes of Joe Hands, uh, for example, they have had their loans renewed for another year. In fact, if we just look at the under-23 team here, um, you are going to notice the fact that there is lots of players out on loan. And you might also notice something else that's new. If the under-23 page wants to load here. You can do it, Football Manager. Come on, lo load with me, FM. Maybe I'll click on it again. That That's never not solved a computer issue, hasn't it? There we go. Um, so, yeah, you can see here lots of players out on loan. And you may also notice our under-23s are in a division. Woohoo! Uh, that's, that's an over-the-top reaction, perhaps. But, yes, finally, our under-23s are going to play kind of competitive matches. That is really, really good news. That's going to help us a lot. So that is a, another huge weight off my shoulders. Anyway, we've talked about the outs, and you might have noticed Smolio isn't there. We'll talk about him in just a second. But on the ends, we've spent some money, folks. Yes, £160,000 on one player. That's a new record. Benny Encololo. I feel like I'm just going to call him Lolo. Um, check him out. 29 years old, signed from Lyon Ducher. I don't think that's how you say it. But you can see here they're a team in the French National Division. You'll notice a gap in his history here. This is the duration of the save where we've not had France loaded. But either way, £160,000 paid for him. I feel like he's a really, really good centre mid. And that's something that we've lacked here. An attacking midfielder. You can see on support. Great vision, great dribbling. Agility is superb as well. Yes, his composure and decisions and passing could perhaps be a tiny bit better. But a really well-rounded player. And at 29 years old as well, comes in with a little bit of experience, which I think is something needed in the team. Um, but yeah, I, I like the look of him. I feel like of all the players we've signed, he's the one who I'm most happy with. And well, you'd hope I'd be happy given the money we've spent. Anyway, well, Ronnie Williamson, the only other player we signed for money this year, uh, he has joined from Porter Down for less than £1,000. Um, I'm pretty sure his contract was expired and we just gave them that money to avoid having to pay any kind of compensation. Either way, fantastic little centre-back this year. We'll probably be our fifth choice centre back 18 years young you can see here suited to national league level has a lot of potential though which leaves me a little bit excited and uh, yeah well keep, keep an eye on him he's got 13 free kicks and defenders with good free kick taking I can only think of Roberto Carlos and debatably David Luiz. So if he can live up to their billing, we'll be in good stead. Anyway, you'll notice here, João Martins has finally joined us. He was one of the youngsters who we agreed to sign years ago. He's finally turned 18. He's finally legal. He's finally in the team. He will play in our under-23s this year alongside another player that we've snapped up. Who isn't in our under-23s? I've told a lie. It's another Croatian. So Surprise face. Yeah, we're, Wolverhampton Wanderers have Portugal. Taulor, we have Croatia. Yeah, we've got here Darko Cicelelej. I'm going to just call him CC. I think that's easy. We'll have Lolo and CC this year. I really, really love this guy, though. 18 years old. Incredible, incredible potential. That makes me very, very excited. He's joined us on a free transfer, has the same agent as Smolio, and uh, I really, really like the look of him. He's joined us on an initial three-year deal. Um, if we just look at his development, uh, not his development, sorry, his contract, you can see contract extension after promotion of three years, only on £200 a week. Personality of unambitious is a problem. I think I sorted out the mentoring before we started today's episode. Let's have a quick look. I did indeed. So yes, you can see here, he is in a mentoring group alongside a few other youngsters, uh, including another new face who will come on to shortly. But Mampala leading the way uh, with Fairly Determined. And also Jack Perdue, who I guess we'll talk about now. Um, model citizen personality, 26 years old, signed from Queen's Parkway. He's been playing for the last seven years. 
Uh, and well, he's joined us. And I really like this guy. Versatile attacking midfielder. His wages might be a tiny bit high for kind of the overall quality that he brings. But he ha has the personality of model citizen. And being 26, he's going to have some pretty good influence in the dressing room as seen by the mentoring groups here, and I feel like I'm willing to pay that little bit of extra wages in the hope that you can have a real good effect, I guess, on the next generation of players joining us. Anyway, you can see here a few other players we've picked up. Uh, first one here, Adam Parker joins us on a free transfer from West Brom. His contract expired with them. They'd had enough of him. Uh, versatile player who can play either fullback position. A uh, little bit of squad depth, a little bit of maybe a punt for the future. But as a free transfer on only £650 a week, I think he looks pretty well-rounded. Really good mentals for this level, which I guess is a, a very good thing in a younger player. We then have here Arthur Onkonkwo. He has joined us on a free transfer. The the, the world's strongest goalkeeper, some have said. 16 strength, 18 jumping reach. He's got great aerial reach too. He's just a giant of a man. I don't know how else to describe him. But yes, with McMenamin going out on loan this year, I wanted to get in another backup goalkeeper. He joins us in. Free transfer, 24 years old. He's got capped once for the Nigeria under-20 national team, so that's a hallmark of quality. You can see here, he started his career at Arsenal, has been to Middlesbrough, has been to Huddersfield, was released by them. We've got him on a free. I think he'll be okay as a little bit of depth in the goalkeeping position. Not expecting fireworks, certainly. We then have Jack Perdue, who we've already talked about, the model citizen himself. And then two loanings. And we'll start with the first one, which is Dejan Nikolov uh, from CSKA Sofia in Bulgaria. Interesting place to pick up a player, you might think, and you'd be right. A uh, bit of squad depth for this guy at the centre-back position. Uh, he's joined us on loan as a hot prospect for the future. Hasn't got the best aerial ability, which is perhaps a little bit of a concern. But I did just need another good little depth centre-back option. Um, who wasn't going to necessarily play a lot of first-team football, but we might call upon should there be an injury crisis. I think Nikolov ticks those boxes quite well. Uh, I'm a little concerned, I guess, about his lack of ability in the jumping and heading department, but as we've seen with the likes of, well, Embleton and Gannon at centre-back. Heading is certainly not everything in your defence. Last but not least, a loan that I'm excited about, but we'll see how much we lean on him. Mark Van Sten. St Sten? Steen, probably. Answers on a postcard. He has played 21... No, he hasn't. He's played 12 times for the under-21s for the Republic of Ireland. I was about to say 21 times for the under-12s. That, that wouldn't be correct. Um, but he's a loney signing we've picked up from Blackburn. Good little forward. And the logic behind bringing in this guy really is that Mampala and Stewart, great players, don't get me wrong, but... And I, 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 I hold my hands up. I hope they can do the business for us. This is not me prophesizing they won't do the business for us. But they probably aren't top League One quality players. I, that doesn't mean I don't think they can do it. They may well do. But I feel like Mark Van Steen, Steen here is the backup plan. You know, we, we don't really have too much pressure to play. And we brought him in on loan. He has a lot of current ability. He'll probably be a player who you see frequently come on off the bench and have an impact. You know, if we go through a goal scoring drought, he is the third choice striker. And I feel like as a free transfer, he's pretty blooming good. Of course, worth remembering, we have got one other player who is a striker who I'm excited about, but won't be joining us for another month. And uh, well, now if the Youth Development Centre page wants to load Police Football Manager, we'll talk all about Shvetsov, uh, the Russian striker. Of course, work permit pending for him. I don't What's happening with my football manager? So, someone get the doctor out for football manager, please. What? What? Come on, you can do it. You can, I believe. You're going to do this, FM. I'll be back in a second when it's loaded. Okay, here we are. Andrei Svetsov. I don't know what's wrong with my football manager. Does anyone else get these weird problems with random freezes between certain screens and if they leave the game running for a little while? I have asked on Twitter. People have said, yeah, I do get that. If you do get it, please let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to know how widespread the problem is, but... It's a little annoying, isn't it? Anyway, Andrei Shvetsov here. I'm excited about, but he joins us in a month and a half's time. He doesn't have a work permit. I'm hoping we can just apply for one and get him one. Otherwise, we might have a Dimitriou situation where we have a quality player who we end up just having to sell. Either way, 17 years old. I mean, you can see how good he is here. Interestingly enough, he's been on trial now for like the last two years. And the attribute masking hasn't solved itself. I think at a point it did actually kind of show his exact attributes and then it reset again. Weird football manager things, I guess. But either way, I've got 
some interestingly high hopes. Operating at a League One level, apparently, a lot of ability to improve in the future. If he can get a work permit, he could be very, very good, but that may well end up being a big if. Anyway, I need to talk about Smolyo because people are going to be like, Jack, why is he still here? You rejected £5 million last year and you should have taken it. Why haven't you sold him this year? And we've got plenty of interest in him if we just look here. Man City, Leicester, Newcastle, Burnley, Brighton. I'll tell you why. I accepted a bid for him, folks. I accepted £9.5 million from Arsenal and 50% of any future sale. And a loan back to the end of the year. I was thinking, that's the loan deal. That's the, that's the deal I wanted, you know. Close to £10 million, 50% of a future deal. We get him on loan to the end of the year. What blooming happened? He rejected the contract from Arsenal. I'll show a screenshot now on the screen. He just said, no, nope, not going to Arsenal. Don't fancy it in North London. I don't know what to make of that. If we just look at the transfers here, there have been some other teams come in for him. And they've made offers, but... Truth be told, the offers that they've been making, by comparison, pitiful. 2.1 million from Man City, 2.7 million from Everton. Given the fact that I've had a bid of 9.5 million in the last month, and on top of that, of course, we had 5 million last year, there's just absolutely no chance I'm selling him for that kind of money. So for now, Smolio remains... He remains a Tower Lord player. I don't know what else to tell you. I thought he'd be going, he's still here, he's still clinging on. Anyway, we've talked about Premier League opposition and Premier League sides a little bit. We need to talk about them a little bit more because we have a new affiliate, everyone. Let's click on it and have a look. Yeah, Manchester United, folks. I, that's a pretty good affiliate, if you ask me. Unfortunately, they all their players had agreed loans already when the affiliation started about two weeks ago. So we've not really able to make the most of it this year. But certainly in the Championship, this is a deal that is going to be huge for us. In the Championship, you can have up to five players on loan. I'm thinking five Manchester United youngsters could take us a mighty long way. So, uh, yeah, a really good sign of the times. I'm sorry to Cardiff City and Cardiff City fans who have been enjoying the series. That affiliation was short-lived, wasn't it? Um, yeah, we didn't really make the most of it. They didn't have players good enough to, who wanted to join us, unfortunately. But nevertheless, Manchester United, new affiliates. That's some exciting news there. Anyway, today we are going to be taking on Oxford United in League One. And in terms of the team for today's game, we have got one player missing. That is Liam Coyle. He is out suspended, but this is how we're going to line up today. So... There's not a great deal of change in the starting 11 for today's match. I guess the, the big thing of note is the fact that we're going to try playing Jacobs out on the right-hand side again. Last year, we started him out on the right and moved him into the middle. He definitely improved when we played him down the middle. But with Lolo joining the team as centre-attacking mid and his inability to play out on the right, it makes sense to play this guy at centre-attacking mid and uh, try Jacobs out on the right again. I know in terms of role familiarity, and Kololo isn't really there just yet, but I do feel like he can develop his game there. The rest of the team remains largely unchanged. You probably noticed it with the transfers. We've not done a crazy amount of moves. You know, we've made a decent amount of money, mostly off the Dimitriou signing. The wage budget for the year hasn't gone up. Um, if you're wondering, by the way, about the club finances, in a really good position since the investments have come in. £200,000 in profit. Uh, I don't think we need to be worrying about the money like we did last year. I feel like now, I feel confident in the fact that come the end of the year, when we're running out of money, Alexander's just going to plough some money in like he did this year. So less focus on the red money this year, I feel like. We don't need to worry about that debt. But in terms of the first team, obviously, not a whole load of new transfers. On the bench as well, we've got Younger, Patterson, Shuttleworth. CC is going to be on the bench. I'm excited to see what this guy can do. I feel like he's got a massive, massive future ahead of him. He is also listed as our big hot prospect at the club now on the overview screen. So I feel like I have to have him on the bench and give him some game time. Who knows? Maybe he'll make a debut here. We've then got Sean McAllister, Ballo and Mampala for today's game. That does mean that to start the year, we're not going to have Van Steen on the bench. Um, I feel like he will make appearances as the time goes on. Same with Jack Purdue as well. A few question marks perhaps about excluding some of the new additions, but they were kind of brought in for slightly different reasons. You know, Purdue for his personality and a bit of experience. Van Steen obviously as that third choice striker, which we currently lack behind Stewart and Mampala. Um, we'll see how this year goes. I feel like there's going to be a fair amount of rotation 
And much like last year, actually, I think the team that we start the first game of the season with is going to be completely different come the end of the year. Certainly something that I realised throughout last season was you have to be quite flexible. You have to be willing to uh, experiment and sometimes just accept a player doesn't work in a specific role or position and try something different. And with the squad depth that we've got now, with the new players we've brought in, we've certainly got a lot more plan Bs and Cs. You know, they're not going to be on the plan A solution list necessarily the new signings but what they are going to do is hopefully just give us backup plans when the season doesn't go to plan and well in league one this year we've not been given a whole lot of new money to spend it's going to be kind of down to the true and tried and tested i guess to step up and show us what they can do at this level that said when you look across our team i feel like we are ready for a league one campaign on the whole and we should be hopefully pushing for the playoffs should should the game ever load again right a football manager is drunk i'm gonna have to restart it before i continue playing in my own time after i finish recording until it's loaded um yeah i'm gonna go and make a tea i'll be back in a second okay guys so we have loaded finally that took like two minutes i mean maybe it's a long trip to oxford from oxford from tau law i'm not entirely sure anyway you can see their team that they're going with they're going with a four two three one we're matching them pretty much although it looks like they might be playing with two deeper midfielders which could prove interesting obviously only the one debutante for us in our starting 11 let's see how benny gets on shall we and uh well just before we get into the game i do need to give a quick little shout out and thank you to dodgy d-pad um for making me some 3d kits of our current towel or strip so of course we added in the new 2d kit last year in game we now have that kit in 3d in the match engine which is really really cool so i'll have links to his socials down below he's a fairly new and up and coming youtuber feel free to check out his channel but yeah massive massive thank you really cool to see you know the 2d kits come to life now in 3d for this new year and well hopefully they're going to prove a good luck charm and we can get a result to start our season here against Oxford United. Their media prediction is mid-table, although it is still slightly above ourselves. So maybe they go in as marginal favourites. That said, we'll hope for big things ourselves. And while we head the ball away once, only as far as Fossu, can we stop the shot? We don't need to. It goes just over. I think Smolio may have had it covered, but in the early stages here... It's been a pretty 50-50 game. We're just edging out possession, but Oxford having a few more chances go their way... Set piece whipped into Smolio. And, uh, well, you know we're in League One now because suddenly the stands are starting to feel a little bit more packed out. You know, they're starting to get filled. And, well, Stuart breaks free. Can he do it at League One level? Of course he blooming can. It's Leighton Stewart, folks. Smolio with the assist. <laughs> it's Route One. It's not particularly sexy, but we'll take it to start our campaign this year. Not particularly sexy is okay by me as long as it gets the job done. Look at it. Stuart. Ghosts inside, hits it. What a lovely finish that is. Look at the blue kit. They're all loving it, the players. No more generic black and white kind of striped kit with indistinguishable numbers on the back. Now we're looking snazzy. Andre Dezel to whip the ball in here. Back post, who's there? No one. Embleton, though, keeping it alive. Back to Andre, crosses it in. And Colo's there. He's offside. I think that's Dezel who's offside. The game actually froze for me for a second on the header there. I assume it was to sell. I thought for a second that Benny was about to have his dream debut. I know I talked about calling Benny and Colo Lolo. I feel like Benny's just a nicer name, isn't it? Than Lolo. Or maybe maybe Benny Lolo. I don't that's not that's not a nickname at that point, Jack. You're just making more work for yourself. Either way, I'm gonna tell the boys I'm far from happy. And, uh, well, it, by the way, if I sound very excited to be back, I've been away on holiday, as you know. It's my first day back from my holiday. I'm just excited to play football manager. I'm full of beans and full of excitement for the save game. League One is an exciting time. It's when I feel like the challenge is really going to start to build for us, especially due to the, you know, inability, I guess, to bring in loads of new players this year. Um, as they have an effort that goes a little wayward. That's a bit of a let off. It would have been offside. An hour gone, changes to be made, I think. Andre Dezel's on a book in. You know what? I'm going to bring in CC. Now, the issue with CC is he isn't much of a deep line playmaker, but he can play advanced playmaker, so we'll switch the role around there. In the attacking midfield department, DKM has some question marks over his ability to do it at this level. He's not solving things for us right now. I think we'll try Ballo out on the left hand side. He, of course, scored that extremely memorable goal a few episodes ago. Experts calling it the goal of the series so far, if I'm not mistaken, and saying he was robbed after the end of season episode where he wasn't given goal of the season for it. 
Let's see what he can do for us out on the left-hand side, cutting in on his right foot. Norris wins his header. All the way back to Cornick. Now with Cowell. Look at this press. Force the error out of them. Force the presser on press, pressure onto their dicky at the back. That's what we need to do, everyone. Jacobs wins the header, but nods it straight back down to them. And uh, we could be quite a little bit short now on this left-hand side. We seem to be regrouping well, and they're not really finding that penetrative pass. It feels like a chance is going to emerge from us pressing here, rather than them passing through us. At least that's the vibe I'm getting. Maybe I'm going to be completely wrong. Ball cleared, only as far as Jacobs, with his banana boots. What can he do? Number seven, he's like David Beckham. Ballows there, skips past his man. Oh, CC, 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 CC. That was his chance for a goal on his debut. And he just kind of tapped it really gently to the goalkeeper, like he, like he was being kind. It remains 1-0. We've got one last sub in us. You know what? I'm going to take off... Be I was going to take off Benny. I don't really have anyone to bring on f for Benny. Jacobs is looking tired, so we'll bring in Shuttleworth on the right. The world's slowest inverted winger, Shuttleworth. Cowell shoots it. It's blocked. His eff second effort goes over. That was a little bit scary for a second, wasn't it? Oxford are cranking up the pressure here in the last five minutes. Now it's Edwards with the ball. We block it fortuitously at the first time of asking. It's whipped in Embleton to CC. Ballow lumps it clear to Stewart. I mean, the route one approach not quite working there. Dickinson's through. He's offside. Breathe a sigh of relief, everyone. My heart sank for a second there, but it's going to be ruled out. It remains 1-0 here. Was it offside? We don't have VAR here. I mean, I have to trust the lines because I can't see anything else that's happening. It was a really tidy finish on his left foot on the volley as well. He's going to feel robbed about that. One minute left. The highlight starts. This has got to just be full time, right, ref? Just blow the whistle, ref. Time's up. We've played seven seconds too many. Bradshaw inside hits it wide. That will be all she wrote. Not the most exciting game in terms of goals, but ultimately... It's a 1-0 win. It's a win on the board away from home in a game that is against a side who are in the mid-table. We weren't expected to get a result there, and we've done just that, which, I'll tell you what, ain't, ain't a bad way to start the year, is it? 1-0 on August the 1st, and we, we get a win. And when you're in a new league, I feel like that always settles the nerves a little bit, you know, just... Proving yourself worthy to play at that level. There's nothing worse than getting promoted and losing, you know, your first five or not winning in your first five. Good performance by Leighton, though. I feel like a lot of this season is going to be determined by can we get the goals and can the players that we're going to keep faith in continue to develop and deliver at this level. That, by the way, for Leighton Stewart, is the sixth different tier of English football that he has scored at for Taulor in the league. And when you look at his numbers, they're just a little bit crazy, aren't they? Not, not a bad little turnaround from a player who was released by Liverpool after the first year to come to us and kind of make of his career what he has done, especially when you consider he spent a year without a football club in 2020-21. Uh, but anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. I feel like I was a little overexcited for today's episode, so hopefully it was tolerable. And I will hope to see you guys tomorrow where we will be continuing on with our League One adventure. I'm excited for it. You should be too. And, uh, well, until next time, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.